In this video, we're going to look at how Visa makes money. And to do this, we have to first start by busting some myths about how Visa actually makes money. Firstly, Visa does not lend money. Banks lend money. None of the interest on your credit card goes to Visa. Likewise, you don't get any of the late fees being paid to Visa. Also, they don't issue cards. Card issuers are the ones that earn the fees from issuing cards. These are usually banks. And most confusingly, Visa does not charge merchants, i.e. the shops, directly. How Visa actually makes money is considerably more complicated. And to understand how Visa actually makes money, you need to understand the Visa payment system. To do this, you need to understand issuing and acquiring banks as it's those banks that handle all of the money and actually pay Visa. So let's look at the process. We've got a consumer with a credit card paying a merchant such as Walmart in this case. You may think that the money goes straight to the merchant, but it's actually much more complicated than that. So this is where the issuing and acquiring bank actually comes in. The acquiring bank is the merchant's bank and the issuing bank gives you your card. You pay your bill to them, the issuing bank, and they may give you some sort of incentive like cash back or points. The issuing bank then pays the money to the acquiring bank and in return for their trouble, they receive what we call an interchange fee. The merchant earns sales revenue from the purchase, but the acquiring bank applies what we call a discount rate, meaning that not all of your money that you pay goes to the store. This money is principally divided between the two banks and Visa. So this is where Visa's money is starting to creep in. So let's look at the same idea, but we're going to put some numbers on it. So we've got exactly the same setup as before. We have, say, $100. So you've paid $100 to the store and you put that on the credit card. So the issuing bank is going to get some interest. See, the interest is going to the bank, not to Visa. Then only $98.30 roughly is going to actually be passed on. $1.70, which is the interchange fee, usually 1.7%. It varies depending on various factors. That's going to go to the issuing bank. We then have $2 of fees that are going to be deducted. So we've got a discount rate of 2%. So you've spent $100 and the merchant has actually only received $98. That gives us a $2 pool from which banks and Visa can make money. So you've paid $100, only $98 actually went on to the merchant. So there's $2 in this and it varies slightly. This is a simplified example, but roughly $2 out of every 100 is being divided up by the people in this payment system. Let's look at Visa specifically. This is from Visa's um, quarterly report and it breaks down the sources of revenue for Visa. So you've got service revenues, data processing revenues, international transaction revenues, and you've got this huge 230 million that's just other because Visa is so big. And then lastly, you have this uh, number at the bottom for client incentives and that number is negative. That's money that Visa is pumping back into the system in order to grow it. So let's look at these various things. So Visa is fundamentally a network that is connecting all of these different banks together. And Visa doesn't do this as a charity. It wants to get some money from this. So it's charging fees for the authorization, the clearing of those payments and the settlement of the payments. And it's also charging for network access. So that's data processing that you see in the Visa 10Q is roughly 0.1%. So that's a kind of base number to go with. So $1,000, that would mean that, um, well, 1% of 1,000 is 10. So about $1 out of every 1,000 is going on data processing and going straight to Visa. Very rough. Then you've got service revenues, which is charged to the member banks just for maintaining the network. And those fees are linked to total volume. So as payments increase around the world, as people stop using cash, the revenues of Visa and the service revenues business are expected to increase. The next thing you've got is international payments. So we've got this same diagram from before, but let's make a slight modification. So let's say we've got Walmart, which is an American company, and we replace that with Morrison's, which is a UK supermarket. 
And I don't know who Morrison's banks with as an acquiring bank, but let's just imagine it's Barclays because they have a nice shiny building. So we've changed the acquiring bank to a British bank and we've changed the merchant to a British merchant. But you've still got a Bank of America card. So it's an American um, issuing bank. You've got your American account associated with that and you work in dollars. Visa can now make quite a substantial amount of money out of these transactions and much more profitable because what you find is the discount rate on these transactions is bigger, larger interchange fee. And so fees are taken out of this by Visa for processing international payments. So they get um, additional fees from that. And also you've got a currency conversion, you've got dollars into pounds and Visa makes a spread on that transaction. And lastly, for completeness, we should mention what this other was. You've also got fees from account holder services, fees for using the Visa trademark and licensing that trademark. And you've also got various other businesses that generate freestanding revenue that Visa has acquired. These are not exactly broken down, but this covers the majority of the other.